All right, last thing for this week. Let's go over function composition. So I'm warning you with these two pictures that nine times out of ten, in fact, let's just go ahead and say 999 times out of a thousand, you guys hate this stuff. All right, because it can be extremely difficult to understand. And the key is going to be going back through this lecture uh, video again, as well as the example, until it starts to click. All right, I am going to walk you through everything slowly so you understand that this is not arithmetic on functions, that this is sending one function inside of another. Okay, so let's talk about composition of functions. All right, if f and g are functions, then here we get our lovely math textbook definition here, okay? And you guys might remember this as a golf or fog um, in uh, high school or middle school or something, but I want you to notice that the trick to writing it, you're going to want to write it this way, okay? Uh, and over here on the left, I'm reading it in order, g of f of x. All right, and so I read g of f of x. That's the order that I read it left to right. And so those are, that's the same order I'm gonna write my letters over here on the right. And notice that when I say of, I'm gonna write a parentheses. So g of f of x, all right? And so that's the key to setting it up correctly, is letting the English or your mouth or the language guide you into writing the composition. All right, so here um, is just a, a visual description of, of what we're doing, all right? And so if I want g of f of a, all right, that means where am I plugging a? Well, a goes into f, all right? So I'm sending a via function f over here, all right? And then where do I send that f of a? Well, I'm sending that through g, all right? I'm applying f of a to g. All right, and that's the composition. So A goes into F, and F of A goes into G. All right, so the best way to learn in math, I'm convinced, is with examples. So let's walk through this one, where we have F of X equals 2X minus 1, and G of X equals 4, divided by X minus 1. And again, pay attention to how I'm reading the problem here. F of G of 2. All right, so I want f of g of 2. So ask yourself, where am I plugging in 2? Well, 2 goes into g, all right? And so we need to find g of 2. So I plug 2 into g, and I get 4, all right? Now, since g of 2 equals 4, I need to find f of 4, all right? Because that's what g of 2 is. So I plug 4 into f, and I get 8 minus 1, which is 7, all right? And so my answer is 7, all right? So again, the key here is that I plug 2 into G, I get a new number 4, and that's the number I plug into F. All right, let's try another one. G of F of negative 3, working with our same functions, all right? So where am I plugging negative 3? Well, note the negative 3 is next to F. So I'm plugging negative 3 into f, and I'm getting negative 7. All right, well, what am I going to do with negative 7? Negative 7 is what I'm sending into g. All right, and so I plug negative 7 into g, and I get negative 1 half. All right, and I say, I, I use this box here, don't confuse composition with multiplication, because that's the number one mistake I see from you guys. All right, we're done with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That was the last lecture material. All right, this is where we send negative 3 into F, get a number negative 7, and we send that new number negative 7 into G to get our negative 1 half answer. All right, now let's keep it in terms of x, all right, f of g of x, given our function f of x equals 6 over x minus 3, and g of x equals 1 over x, all right, so what is g of x? Well, g of x is the function 1 over x, and that, you guys, is what we're going to plug in to our f function. All right, we're plugging G into F wherever we see an X. 
all right? So I'm, all I did was I took my f function, 6 over x minus 3, and instead of writing an x, or typing an x in this case, I wrote my g function, which is 1 over x. All right, now this does look hideous, I agree with you, but there's a very easy fix to this very complex fraction, and that is we can just multiply every single term by x. All right, so notice if I multiply every single term by x, my 1 over x just becomes a 1, and I get an x on my 6 and my 3. Okay, and so this is our composed function of sending g into f. All right, so the question is, what about the domain? All right, the domain of g, all right, so let's look at g, because g is what we're sending into f. The domain of g, 1 over x, is everything except 0. Obviously, we can't plug in 0 because we can't divide by 0. All right, and the domain of f is all real numbers except 3. All right, so the expression for g, therefore, cannot equal 3. All right, so we need to determine the value that makes g of x equal to 3 and exclude it from the domain. So we've already excluded 0 because g can't equal 0, but we also need to exclude where g of x equals 3. All right, and so that's the math you're going to see me do. I take my g of x, I set it equal to 3. All right, I'm going to solve for x. Again, I'm just going to multiply both sides by x, divide by 3, and I get x equals one-third, all right? At g of x cannot equal one-third, all right? So what does that mean for my uh, domain under the composition? I cannot have zero, all right, because we can't plug zero into g, and I also cannot have one-third because one-third plugged into g, all right, would make my f of x function zero. All right, so again, I'm not expecting everybody to have a light bulb going off and going, oh, okay, this makes perfect sense. This is something that you need to practice, and this is something that you probably need to listen to again. All right, this is setting us up for next week, but I want to let's go through a problem showing that f of g of x does not necessarily equal g of f of x, meaning composing different ways, I could get completely different answers. All right, so for starters, let's find f of g of x, meaning let me plug g of x into my function f. All right, so I'm plugging 2x squared plus 5x into my function f. All right, notice instead of writing 4x plus 1, I'm writing 4 times my g of x function plus 1. I'm going to distribute that 4, and I get my new function 8x squared plus 20x plus 1. All right, that's f of g of x. What happens when we do g of f of x? All right, so now I'm plugging f of x, 4x plus 1, into my g function. So everywhere I see an x in g, I write 4x plus 1 in parentheses. All right, obviously that first set I'm going to have to FOIL. All right, so I FOIL the 4x plus 1. I distribute the plus 5. All right, now I distribute my 2 and combine my like terms, and I get 32x squared plus 36x plus 7. All right, clearly 32x squared plus 36x plus 7 does not equal 8x squared plus 20x plus 1. And so here's a simple example of where we can see composing either way doesn't necessarily mean we get the same functions. It's going to be a very special case when we do get the same function, and that's going to be inverses.